when you have an electrical problem in your house, you call an electrician. The electrician comes with his or her bag of tools and starts working on the issue. Not one of us will stand, watch, and comment. No, you didn't tie the knot tight enough. Why are you using half-inch wiring instead of quarter-inch wiring? Use the blue tape, not the black tape. But when a marketer is creating a campaign, everyone has a f***ing opinion. I don't like the blue t-shirt. Let's change it to green. Why didn't we cast that girl instead of this one? This copy sounds a bit off. Bear in mind that we're comparing a vocational job to a business professional with years of education, training, and experience. But why was this happening? What's the insight? Well, the electrician's job has a strict and measurable result. When you flip on the switch, either the light turns on or it doesn't. If it does, then all is good. If it doesn't, there's a problem. Ten, fifteen 15 years ago, marketing return on investment was basically not measurable. There used to be a good saying, 50% of my marketing budget is crap, I just don't know which 50%. Because the results were not as measurable, then it became more about the process than the results, so everyone has an opinion. That has changed and changed fast. Today, marketing is understandably much more digital. This means that our marketing return on investment is exponentially more measurable. You spend a certain amount, measure you know, cost per click, conversion, lifetime value, or check size, and bam, you have your marketing efficiency. All of a sudden, no one has an opinion anymore. And the ones that do, you can tell them basically to go to hell. As long as you're bringing in more money than you are spending, you're golden. As long as you flip the switch and the light turns on, you're good to go. This also means that the marketing function in itself has become much, much more valuable. We as marketers are now in a very high demand because finally we can prove with irrefutable evidence that we are doing and it's working. That trend is only going to grow as more and more startups and SMEs understand that the overall market is super saturated. There's a lot of of competition everywhere. So simply having a cool new product is not going to be enough to be successful. You have to be able to market your product. In comes the marketer. 21st century marketing is data based. In God we trust, all others must bring data. 60-70% of my day-to-day -day job has to do with numbers and databases. The Mad Men style whiskey drinking, cigar smoking days of the marketing are long gone and they're never coming back. If you are not comfortable working with numbers and data, then you cannot be a marketer anymore. Ultimately, it comes down to one simple truth. If you are not present on your target group's phone screen, then you don't exist. Billboards, TV ads, and so on have lost a significant amount of value. You must end up on your target group's screen with the right message and at the right time. If we accept this premise, then all marketing activities become data-driven. Being comfortable with working with numbers and data has become so prevalent that when I'm hiring a new recruit right out of college, and if I have a choice between hiring someone with a technical background like applied mathematics or data analysis, or someone with a humanitarian background like linguistics or copywriting, I almost always choose the candidate with the technical background. It's easier for me to teach the math guy the nuances and insight mining techniques of marketing versus teaching the humanitarian guy how to run data analytics. I was super lucky. I received a master's degree in finance before I switched to marketing and my analytical skills have helped me remain relevant and grow as a marketer. Guys, we need to hit a thousand subscribers as soon as possible so we can continue making these awesome videos. So please help us out and hit that sub button now. I've been a professor of marketing for over 10 years now, so I get a lot of people asking me if I can refer a good candidate, and more importantly, what is a good candidate? What skills and personality traits does someone have to have to be a successful marketer in the 21st century? Well, marketing has always been a mix of knowledge and vision. 10, 15 years ago, the vision part had a bigger role. Marketing decisions were being made based on 60, 70% vision and maybe 30, 40% knowledge. Steve Jobs is a great example of this. He would almost never run any quantitative research or any focus groups. He would say that the consumer just doesn't know what they want. He can see the future needs of people so why ask them what they want? Supervision-based and very little knowledge-based decision-making process 
no longer exists is different today. There are zettabytes of data floating around. And if you don't use that data to your advantage, your competitor will and you will ultimately lose. So it kind of flipped. Today we're about 70% knowledge and only 30% vision. There'll, there'll always be a vision element. Taking all of the subjectivity out of the marketing process is impossible. Why? Ultimately, databases will give you information about what is going on. But what you do with that data is up to the marketer. Getting insights from the data and creating marketing strategies based on those insights are the basis of any great marketer. So when I'm asked, what is a trait a good marketer must have? I always answer curiosity. A marketer must be curious. What people are doing is not as relevant as why they're doing it. The fact that you drink Coca-Cola is much less important than why you drink Coca-Cola. If I can figure out why you drink Coca-Cola, I can then assess whether there's a segment that has the same insight or trigger. Is there scale in that insight? So I can create an entire strategy targeting that insight and ultimately making a ton of money. But to do that, I have to be innately curious. I have to consistently ask why this is happening and be able to peel back the onion to get to the root of the insight. Stop asking what is going on and start asking why is this going on? And this is crucial, the why. The insight has to be human centric. The motivation, the reason why somebody is doing something has to be from their own perspective. Ultimately, you're looking at a bunch of data on a screen. A great marketer will always remember that on the other side of those numbers, there's a human being sitting in Cleveland living their life, and you are probably a very, very small portion of their overall life. Human first, then consumer. There's another trend that also emerged due to marketing becoming more digital and database. Everyone who has anything to do with any type of marketing process is now calling themselves a marketer or a digital marketer. If the overall growth function of a business is the human body, then the marketer is the brain. It's the marketer's job to analyze data, add vision, create specific strategies, solve key business problems, and to identify growth opportunities. SMM, SEO, PPC, PR, etc. They're all the hands and the legs. Without them, you can't run and you can't grow, but it's the brain's job to make sure all the extremities are running towards the same goal. The guy sitting in Cleveland is going to see a blog post about written by your SEO. Then they'll see an ad on Instagram by PPC. Uh, they're gonna see an article on Forbes by a PR. All of those touch points need to be consistent or else you won't break through the noise. The same person has to see the same message multiple times for them to register and you then potentially sell a product or a service. It's the marketer's job to maintain consistency. This is the target group. This is the pain point or insight they have. This is the message we want to use. Now the hands and the legs are all aligned to a single goal. Even more so, the strategies that you come up with will also affect product development, customer success, sales, customer service, and so on. On. You find an underserved segment and you add a feature or you even launch a new product. So it seems like the marketing function has a strategic element to it, which it does. But as soon as we start saying the word strategy, a key question pops into your head. Strategy means long term. How long is long? How far ahead should a marketer plan? The key to answering that question is the size of your company. Large corporations like Danone, Carlsberg, Coca-Cola can plan and execute super, super long-term strategies. The reason is that the key factor for their growth is macro, it's not micro. Coca-Cola is everywhere. You can buy it in Asia, South America, Africa. You can buy Coca-Cola everywhere. This means that the only way for them to grow is either demographic or per capita consumption. If the current world population is growing at 4% a year and the worldwide per capita consumption of carbonated soft drinks is 1.2 liters per person, then planning your growth for 2030 becomes tangible. They will say, okay, 4% population growth a year, plus we can push the 1.2 liters to 1.3 liters based on our marketing activities, then we will grow X amount over the next 10 years. Startups and SMEs, on the other hand, are on the other side of the spectrum. The planning and execution are very micro and thus are very short term, which it has to be. Small companies have to be very agile. You have to be able to pivot at a moment's notice. This is part of your competitive advantage, attacking a niche before the big guy can react. If large corporations use macro Macro data analysis and research as key marketing tools, then small companies and startups use experimentation. It's much faster to have two marketing strategies, pump a thousand bucks into each and see which one has more traction. Whichever one does, you double down and pump more budget. This works until you become a couple of thousand people in the company and the brand starts playing a more important role. So you start using longer term brand communication more versus 
the less shorter term direct product sales. Last but not least, I want to talk a little bit about the future of marketing. Technology and AI are going to be at the heart of everything we do and businesses are not immune. As marketers, we have the obligation of blending knowledge and vision. We must achieve the perfect balance of human centricity and automation to unlock a future of better analytics and deployment of AI at scale. We must use data as fuel yet maintain the art of storytelling to create meaningful connections. We must tightrope between brand marketing and performance marketing. These new marketing truths embody this blend, this complexity of strategy, operation, and technologies required to drive growth in the world. For companies and marketers that are used to the old ways, change is coming. Yet one rule remains true in the past, now, and in the future. In the end, your consumer is a human being. You must be human-centric. Thanks for sticking around. See you next week.